recall that um, there have been many, many issues at the CIDB, uh, issues of capacity and many others that I won't um, talk about. However, the current board, and of course taking on from the previous board um, that uh, we took from, uh, has come up with a whole range of, of initiatives to ensure that we reactivate the industry. We believe that the industry should not die under our own weight, should not collapse under our own weight. So we've decided that we are not only going to be going to board meetings, reading board packs and making written resolutions, that we need to be more active than that, that we need to go knocking at doors, breaking doors if necessary, talking to people who want to talk to us, but also talking to people who do not want to talk to us so that they can do something in calibrating the industry that we all grew up aspiring to be in, we all grew up wanting to play in this industry. Naturally, these things generally happen when we begin to have a critical mass as black people. We are beginning, just beginning to have a critical mass in this industry, albeit critical mass in context. I am not saying we are many, uh, but I'm saying at least we are seeing a number of companies and suddenly we have all of these issues, which means we need to come together and ensure that this critical mass we use positive. So when we were thinking about what were we going to be saying here today, we thought maybe we can share with you how we are repositioning the CIDB for an effective construction industry development. There are many initiatives that you know about that are happening in the CIDB. But there are also those initiatives that are almost sounding like a pipe dream. Because even us, when we started, we felt like these initiatives sound like a pipe dream. But we've now come into understanding how we must deliver on these initiatives. And I'm just going to talk about one of those. And do not look at the end game, but look at the bigger vision about how this could assist the industry. Before I get to it though, uh, I would also like to go to what the president said about jobs about to be lost. Because that statement worried me because I was saying who is losing jobs and who is unemployed right now? Invariably is a black person but more specifically is a young black person. And even more specifically, sometimes with a degree, diploma and the like. Sometimes that young person is the first in the family to go to university. Therefore, the parents are waiting in excitement, waiting for this person to get a job or to start a business, whatever they choose to do. And what happens? Nothing. Year one goes, nothing. Year two, year three, others are like six, seven years. Nothing is happening in their lives. They start questioning the education. They start questioning themselves. If they are strong enough and they have the right background, maybe they get support. But sometimes they are outcasts because people don't understand why they are not getting jobs. I read an article over the weekend from the Mail and Guardian, and before you look at me bad, you also read the Mail and Guardian. <laughs> and this article was just talking about one thing that worried me sick, and it's true, that we have to always fight for space to exist. Never mind to do anything, just exist. And so in this industry, it's exactly the same thing. We are just fighting for space to exist. And we need to change that. And it's up to us to change that. So when the president therefore said there are jobs to be lost, I got worried. But I also got encouraged that maybe it's an opportunity for us to do the right thing. Now, 
At a different level, in his State of the Nation uh, address, the President prioritized a number of things that are important and will build this economy if they happen. One of those was obviously economic transformation, job creation, education, skills, reliable basic services to be delivered, obviously building a capable state, and many of those that uh, he mentioned. I was then thinking, what in this list is different to what the CIDB is and ought to be doing? I actually thought maybe the CIDB is supposed to be doing all of this, but maybe the CIDB is supposed to be doing much more. And maybe I'm going to add just the two things that I think and my board thinks we need to do. We exist for construction industry development, and we must have real programs, not train a person here on in, in a day or two and then say, you've done it. How do we see people from training to delivering projects, to growing in the industry, to being an employer of note, to being a, biz a big business? I don't think we have that program as the CIDP, and that is what we're beginning to think about. To say, how do we do this so that it's not isolated, a uh, hit and miss kind of initiatives? So our development, which will be launching, and I'm not going to talk too much, uh, 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 program director, on the detail, because we hope to be launching this in not too distant a future, hoping that um, our shareholder, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, will do certain things, and then we will do the dance as soon as, as soon as they have done so. Therefore, when we talk development, we are talking how do we fundraise for this development. So the project assessment scheme, we believe, will assist us because in raising that money and investing that money wisely in the development uh, of the people in the industry, we should be able to see a different industry in the next 20 years uh, to come and more. And obviously when we talk development, we are not just talking development in the narrow sense, we are talking development in the widest sense, whether it's technology development, whether it's new materials development, any of those things we have identified and we have an intervention for each and every one of them. And we are, we are proud of that because we, we are using this space when it is quiet in the industry to do things, to, to plan, to look outwardly, and to also look uh, inwardly as, 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 as the entity. As I move uh, slightly away from this, so what have we been doing in repositioning ourselves? Now, we've looked at the industry and we've said this bleeding has to stop, and therefore there are certain things that we must intervene on and intervene on hard. One of those is obviously issue of standard for prompt payment. If, if only, as the president has said, and I'm not going to be able to say it in the best words that he used, if only people were paid on time, uh, we would probably be doing so much better as the industry compared to how we are doing at this point. So we've decided that's our next big assignment and that is where we are going to go to and we will engage anyone and everyone who cares to listen. And luckily, the CIDB board, there is so much energy in that board, it could just blow you over when you are a mile away from it. So I am happy about that and I'm really hoping that we will make so much more uh, progress in that space. So our workplace learning uh, continues and industry monitoring is going to start in earnest as soon as we've built the necessary capacity that uh, we want to build. And of course, we must also deal with issues of governance in the industry and obviously issues of governance uh, internally in the CIDP. What we have experienced uh, as, as one of the issues that worry us is that when there are disputes in projects, the client has sets of attorneys and advocates, of course, and everything that goes with that. 
and a contractor has nothing. We are caught in the middle because we are a government entity. We are supposed to, he to help both. But actually, you have people who are firing with guns and cannons and everything, and I don't know what is the gun of the future, but with that too. And you are dealing with someone who has nothing. And there is absolute unfairness in that. And so what we've been saying is, how do we facilitate the establishment of advisory centers so that we assist people as and when the problem arises? We deal with it and hopefully we close it. It doesn't mean that all of the problems will be closed, but at least an ordinary person who is a grade two, grade three, grade four, five, and six, who really truly are only interested in running the project rather than dealing with high level issues, uh, all they want is to ensure that their projects run and they release the progress payments and they get what they need to get for the work um, done. So that is what we are working on as part of the repositioning process. We also know that we, we do not exist in an island. We exist within the context of SADC, we exist within the context of Africa, and therefore we also have to assist uh, our own business to penetrate and begin to operate in other spaces in terms of getting projects. So whether it's Mozambique, whether it's Malawi, whether it's Ghana, whether wherever, where projects are, we are really trying to start looking at these things positively and saying, if people are coming to work here, what is it that prevents us from being able to export our own uh, in terms of competence? And in this room, in this conference room, uh, there are so many good brains that can do these things anywhere in the world. And why are we confined into South African space that is so saturated at this point in time? So we need to do that. And we as the CIDP are beginning to think about that and initiating initiatives uh, uh, around that. Of course, uh, all of this and many of the things that I would have wished to speak about would not be practical if projects do not exist. We don't exist to learn, we don't exist to train, we don't exist to do all the things I've just spoken about. We exist to deal with issues of projects on the ground. So there are many projects that have been planned there are many projects that were advertised, for instance, as far back as 2016, not awarded as yet.